Hi, this is Kevin Bowersox. I'm the creator of the blog Two Thought, and today we're going to walk through a tutorial to create a spring data project. To begin, I'm going to open STS and create a new Java project. I'm going to title it Two Thought Tutorial Data. And once I have the project set up, I'm going to delete the source folder. And we are going to use Maven standard directories. Uh, the, this is a directory structure suggested by Maven in which we should structure our projects. So we're going to create a few of these. Um, I'm going to make a source folder first one I want would be source main Java. The next one I would like to make will be source main resources. I'm also going to make another folder titled source test Java and one more folder source test resources. Okay, so we have our source folders and now we're going to configure our project as a Maven project. This will give us a pom.xml file. Uh, we can use that to pull in our dependencies, other additional libraries we need. And then we're also going to add another configuration to our project we're going to make it a spring uh, project. So we add the spring project nature. Now that our project structure is in place, we need to pull in the required libraries. The first library we'll need to add is the spring data project. And we'll using, be using the JPA flavor and then we'll need a JPA implementation. So we will grab Hibernate's Entity Manager. Uh, this does all the work of persisting to the database. Uh, next we will add the Spring Test Framework. And we will also add the H2 database. This is a, an embedded Java database. Okay, we'll save that. And we look at our dependency hierarchy and we can see that Maven has resolved all the dependencies of the libraries we've, in, we've included. With our dependencies in place, we can now begin to configure Spring. Uh, I'm going to put our spring configuration within source main resources. I'm going to put that in a new folder titled metainf. And then within that folder, I'm going to create a spring, spring bean configuration file. I'm going to call that application context.xml. And at this point, we will be able to begin configuring spring. Uh, the first thing we need to configure is the database. And if we add a namespace to our configuration file, the JDBC namespace, uh, we get some assistance with the configuration. So we can add an embedded database. And we'll set its type equal to H2. And we also set an ID, and we'll call it data source. Next, we will need to configure our entity man manager factory. And I'm going to consult Spring's documentation uh, for the XML.
So if we go to Get Started, uh, you'll see Read the Documentation. We choose Spring Framework. And on the right, we'll see we can choose the HTML version. I'm going to search for Entity Manager. And there are three options we have uh, for enti Entity Manager factories. Uh, the option we will use is the Local Container Entity Manager Factory Bean. So I'm going to copy this snippet of XML. I'm going to paste that into our configuration. And I'm going to give the Entity Manager Factory a new ID. I'm going to set the data source property to reference the data source bean we created. And then I will delete the load time weaver. And then there's one other piece we need to add. And we need to specify a persistence unit name. And this is part of JPA specification. Uh, this will actually be contained within our persistence.xml file, which we'll set up later. So I'm just going to leave that as is, and we will come back and modify that. Next, we need to set up our transaction manager. And I'm going to consult the Spring documentation uh, for the transaction manager. So I'll grab that snippet of XML. I'm going to give the transaction manager a new ID. And then in the entity manager factory property, we are going to reference the bean we just created, the entity manager factory. We'll save that. Finally, we'll need to set up our spring data configuration. And there's also a namespace available for this, uh, which can help us with the configuration. So we'll use the JPA namespace, and then we can reference that. Um, it has a repositories tag, and it wants us to specify a base package. Uh, this is the package where we will put our repositories. So I'm going to create that package so we can reference it. save that. So it's going to, when the application starts, that package will be scanned for any interface that extends one of the Spring Data repositories, and that will be initialized as a bean which we can use to persist any object to the database. There's still one major piece of our configuration missing, and that's the persistence.xml file we talked about earlier. So we're going to create that. It's very important it's within the meta inf folder. And I'm going to head back to the documentation because they have a nice persistence.xml example. Just passed it. So I'll grab this configuration. It's handy to work off an example uh, because you don't want to have issues with these namespaces. And now within this configuration file, we can delete those two properties. And we'll give the persistence unit a name. And we need to take that name and reference that within our application context. So here we fill in this value, save that. At that point we're done with our spring configuration. And now there's some properties that need to be placed within this XML file. And I'm going to refer reference Hibernate's documentation to help us with this.
the first tag we need is this provider tag. This lets JPA know we're using Hibernate. And then we'll copy these properties. The first property uh, specifies what database we're using, so we need to change this to H2. Uh, this second property tells Hibernate to create our tables when the application starts. And a third property I'm adding will tell Hibernate to show the SQL it uses. This is handy for debugging, and it will print in our console. With our persistence file in place, we can begin creating our entities. So I'm going to create a new class, and I'm going to place that class within a new package called Entities. I'll name the class Post, and then I'm going to give the class a few fields. So there's a post ID, a title, and a post date. Now I'm going to generate getters and setters for these fields. We'll import the date. And now we can begin annotating this field with JPA annotations. The first one is at entity. The second one is the table annotation. Give it a name. We'll import those entities. And then we need to specify our ID and then we know we let hibernate know that this is a generated value we assign it a strategy I'm going to use auto and we can give the column a name And at this point, our entity is uh, wired with JPA annotations, and we just have a little bit more setup to do, and we'll be able to pit persist soon. Now we can create our repository. Uh, repositories must be an interface. And that interface must extend Spring Data's JPA repository. There's a few options here. I always choose the JPA repository. Um, it has some generic type parameters we must specify. The first one being the type of object we're persisting, and the second one being the type of that object's ID. So at this point we can create that repository. I'll import the post class. I'll save. And now we can move on to making our unit test. We will put that in the source test Java directory. Uh, so we'll make a JUnit test case. I'm going to put that within our package. I'm going to call it post repository test. So, and it'll ask us if we want to add JUnit 4 to the class path, and we will. We need to add some annotations to our JUnit test to make it work with the Spring Test Framework. So I'm going to head back to the Spring documentation. And this time we're going to look for the Test Frameworks documentation. That's still within the Spring Framework core documentation. We'll select that, and I know I'm looking for the at run with annotation, so I will pull that into our class. Uh, this basically bootstraps Spring with JUnit, and then it's we point at a application configuration. 
so we need to specify where that's located. So we'll start from the class path, and then we'll go into the meta inf folder, and then application context.xml. This is referencing this file we created earlier. We can now begin creating our test. So the first thing we'll need to do is auto wire the post repository. And we'll import the annotation and the class. And now we'll create a new post object to persist. Set some of the fields. Import the date. Now we'll use the repository to save it. And now we'll pull it out of the database. I can pull the post ID because it gets updated once we save. I'll check that it's not null. And then just for fun, I'm going to output the title's name. We'll fix that problem there. And at this point, we have our test set up. We can run it. So at this point, we received an error. Um, for those of you who are observant, you were probably screaming at me a few minutes ago when I forgot to put the X in XML. So let's save that, and we'll try running the test again and you can see this time we pass and we get the name of our or the title uh, displayed in our console so that is the end of our tutorial uh, if you have any questions feel free to email me um, and look for more of these to come out I look to expand upon this tutorial so until we meet again